The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. If I'm found guilty, there is no problem I'm willing to serve. I have no problem. Jails are meant for human beings. They say a society gets the leadership it deserves. Mm. If you have a corrupt, crooked and rotten society like we have in Kenya, then of course they will get that kind of a leadership. I think the president should dissolve parliament. That's the best solution at this moment in time. Dissolve parliament. All of you go home. Yes, we all go home. How are we encouraging other people who might have new and creative ideas? Young people who are making money without any government help. They are just buying their own bundles. They are going on TikTok and making money. KRA is coming after them. Mm. I've been in parliament for 15 years. We have been unable to pass the gender law. And yet no presidential candidate is talking about it now. Because we are fake. The truth is all the men refused to vote for that law. What did Sonko do to Pomoni from Maternity Hospital? Yeah, he with cleaned his it own up. money. Cleaned it with his own, own money. money. That, that was him as an individual. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I did not say he was cleaning his own money. I was saying he was cleaning. He cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> Foot, mouth. Foot, <laughs> mouth. Eric. <laughs> okay. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. This is the fifth day. It's the first Friday of November. Kenya's biggest conversation begins now. Wherever you're tuned in, we're glad that you're able to join us. We're live on Spice FM and we're live streaming the show on Spice FM KE, on YouTube, on Facebook and on Twitter. And today, we're beginning the show from the end. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> so we'll do a newspaper review a little while later because we have a guest who has come in early in the morning because he has other commitments and we agreed, all right, because we want to have an important conversation with you. Can we um, accommodate one another? And he said, yes. And he's here with us. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Nordin Haji, joins us in the Situation Room. Good morning, sir. Morning. It's good to have you. Thank you very much. This early morning. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's, it's good to see you as well. Um, looking as good as you looked the last time you were here. You're not aging at all. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> with all the gray hair. Yeah. Oh, no, that is not aging. Yeah, it's not aging. Uh, no, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> There's a young man here who <laughs> <laughs> has been like this since we met him. Mm, yeah. at, the ten, at the tender age of 63, he doesn't feel old at all. He hasn't changed. <laughs> and agreed. <laughs> Not one single beat. <laughs> but a DPP, that is a hot seat. And welcome to the hot seat. But now, hot seat for you is... I mean, Every day. Look, you, have, you are battle-hardened. In fact, last week you quoted as having said, you are battle-hardened. You have been to Somalia and survived and you came back. You have been in this job, you have survived. So even if we warm up that seat to the, the degrees of about 1,500 degrees, pss, that's just going to be lukewarm for you. So <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Welcome to the lukewarm seat. <laughs> Thank you, Latif. So what you were talking about last week in Mombasa, so there was the annual conference of the National Council on Administration of, Just, on Administration of Justice, which brings together various um, actors in the justice sector. Yeah. The uh, Chief Justice chairs it. The, uh, we have the Office of the DPP, the Attorney General's Office, the Inspector General of Police, and the investigating agencies, ESCC, DCI, um, correctional services, all of them were meeting to have a conversation like you always do every year to review the progress in um, uh, people accessing justice and the delivery of justice to the citizens. A number of things came out um, there. One of the things is what you said yourself, that it's very important that we all work together in harmony. We all understand the roles that have been given by the Constitution and by statute. And we all do that work with collaboration with one another. Yeah. Why did you find it important and necessary to remind the people in the meeting of the job that they ought to be doing? Well, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Mm. Um, and as to the question, um, I, I felt it was important for me to put that out. Because even the theme of the meeting itself was uh, collaboration, coordination, and um, um, coordination within the, the sectors. And I felt um, I didn't need I didn't need to be a hypocrite by saying uh, rosy things to Kenyans when really there was a problem. Mm. And I thought that would have been, or should have been, or would be, the most important forum to raise those issues 
so that we can we can actually tackle them as as as, as they should mm -hmm. um, um, instead of just uh, you know putting the things under the rug um, acting as if everything is okay uh, yet we have a problem and uh, that problem would actually affect our effectiveness to to, to discharge our mandate to the Kenyans. Mm. So I thought that was important. What I, I didn't problem? want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> what is the problem? Well, Let me just quote what I what you said, and then you can expound on this. When I reflect, two things stand out: <coughs> unity and service. The police are charged with investigations and enforcement. There are other constitutional and investigative agencies with special mandate, such as the EACC, yeah. the Judiciary for Education and Correctional Professional Services for Rehabilitation, Reformation and Reintegration. The Constitution envisages independent institutions cooperating in an independent manner, in which even when there is tension, these are healthy and necessary to ensure the wheels of justice move seamlessly as each partner understands and plays their role with the realization that each partner's role is equally important. And then he went on to say, at times, partners overstep the boundaries of their constitutional mandate, and then they delve into other people's mandates. Yeah. What's the problem, Bona DPP? Exactly what you said, um, that um, certain individuals <coughs> um, have attempted or feel that um, things should be done the way they were done before. There was a reason why we had the 2010 constitution. And I think uh, I don't need to take Kenyans through the history that we went through. The purpose of the 10, 2010 constitution was to correct um, some some of the of, of the wrongs that were done over the years um, during and before independence, during independence, after and and, and, and you know during the multi-party um, era. The purpose of all documents especially the Constitution, um, it, it, it serves as a framework and a guidance of how um, Kenyans who voted through a referendum wanted things to be, um, to be, to be done in, in, certain, in certain ways and certain manners. And what this Constitution sought to do was to separate the various roles of, um, of, of the justice sector. And that's why I said, if it's investigators, their mandate is to investigate prosecutors uh, to prosecute and the judiciary to adjudicate and then you have the correctional services to reform an individual who has been found guilty mm. and, and incarcerated in, in court so you would not expect that a prosecutor would attempt to go to, 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 to parliament and ask to have the powers of the judge mm. and neither should the investigators because this constitution demarcated those roles and, and even when it said that you could have additional investigative um, agencies, then you would have to refer to the Inspector General. If you, ha if you need additional prosecution services, then you have to refer to the DPP. Because the Constitution is very clear that the Director of Public Prosecution exercises state powers. And state powers is beyond. State powers is, is the state of Kenya itself. Mm. And, and it's beyond even the government. Um, and therefore, anything that therefore comes under that, it will have to be referred to the Director of Public Prosecutions. So, for example, if KRA wants to be able to prosecute, mm. they would have to refer to the Director of Public Prosecution for him to give that concept. And, and it's captured in the various legislations. Mm. So when individuals attempt to hoard those powers and, and they want to be investigators and also prosecutors, then, of course, I have to defend that position because mm. that position is in the Constitution and that's what Kenyans wanted. It's not about me as Nurdin Haji, but it's about the Constitution that I swore to protect. And, and that's basically what I'm trying to do. Mm. What is evident is that uh, <clears throat> the job of the DPP is not a popularity contest. No, it's not. And in pursuit of the mandate that is given to you, I think the headwinds that you speak of uh, seems to be shared universally, but more so if you are given a tag of being a reformer. Reformer in this sense, anyone who seeks to actually abide by the strict dictates of the law, in many instances, is seen as a reformer. Because if you live in a country like Kenya, where what is considered the norm is often completely against what the law actually states. And as you have pointed out, there are people who would like to maintain that situation. 
Not in the preamble. Now my question. <laughs> <laughs> How do you ensure that you keep body, soul, and mind together? And how do you ensure your safety and your sanity in pursuing this job? Um, first of all, <laughs> thank you for, <laughs> I, I don't know whether I should thank you, you've put me in hot soup. <laughs> thank you for refer <laughs> referring to me as, as a reformer. I never looked at it that way. But um, uh, I think the reforms have already been done by uh, uh, having this constitution for us is to just safeguard uh, the constitution and ensure that it is implemented as, as, it, as it should be. Uh, but your question, uh, f for me, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's my family and my religion that keeps uh, the sanity and also the belief that I'm doing this for the sake of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and that um, w what I'm trying to safeguard here um, is, is for Kenyans and for my children also in the future. Uh, um, because if some of these things are allowed to be done the way they have been done uh, before and, and we, we, we just sit down comfortable, um, I, could, um, you know, I could very well do that. But I don't think it will serve my interests, Kenyans' interests and, and the interests of, 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 of the future of this country. Mm. Um, so because of that, I, 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 my conscience is very clear. Um, I, I am comfortable, I'm happy, uh, and I'm actually, um, some people don't seem to understand that the, the more they bring the challenge, the, the, the happier I am to, to, to face it head on. To rise up with the occasion. Yeah, mm. um, and hopefully I'll be able to do that. Um, they're not covering me in, in any, any way, as, a, as I've said before. So um, I think my family, my religion, and my country, mm. the love of my country. Has your life been in danger in any way? Have you been threatened? Um, many times. Um, um, if you look at the reports that were released during the 2013 uh, Westgate, um, um, I think there were some intelligence reports that, uh, that, that were there. Um, me and my family were actually targets, my, my late father and myself, um, by Al-Shabaab. And Al-Shabaab continues to, 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 to say that they will deal with us as a family and uh, as an individual mm -hmm. because of the work that, that we did, some of which I cannot discuss here. Um, <clears throat> th th that has been there. Uh, I, I've been threatened even in, uh, during this job uh, by individuals who felt that um, my decision either to charge or not to charge um, was not favorable. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is part of, of the work. And I think when I took this job, I knew that uh, this would be part of, of the territory uh, and I knew that if, if I was to ensure and to try and stick to the constitution, then uh, that threat would, of course, um, escalate. Um, but um, I'm, I'm ready for that. Right. There have been calls from many quarters asking you to resign yeah. or asking <clears throat> you to leave the position. Um, would you say that there is a there is a misunderstanding of your mandate as you know defined or just you know prescribed by the constitution as well as the uh, the act that there is a misunderstanding and that's why they're asking you to leave the position or are there other issues at play here from what you see, more recently than not, these calls have come out um, more than and they have pre than they had previously. Why do you think this is? Well, <clears throat> I don't think. Okay, but there there are individuals maybe who do not understand the mandate. Mm. First of all, um, I must make it very clear that as, uh, as as prosecutors, we don't investigate. I know there are certain um, jurisdictions, especially civil jurisdictions, maybe jurisdictions that are. Um, <clears throat> in in uh, maybe South America um, and and and, and um, part of Europe that mm. are civil in nature, and prosecutors actually oversee investigations and are part of investing in mm. investigations them themselves. In Kenya, it's a bit different. We are common law. There is that separation. Uh, although when a file comes, then the, the the prosecutor can direct. Um, once the file is complete, then can direct um, the investigator that the file is complete or not complete. Mm. So sometimes there's that, there's that blurring and people uh, tend to um, confuse that. But for this, I think it's very particular. Mm. It's, 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 it's malicious. 
uh, and, and, and it's, it's very targeted because of uh, certain decisions that, uh, that we've made, whether to charge or not to charge. The Constitution is very clear that I can be removed from office uh, through the Public Service Commission, petitions to the Public Service Co Commission for particular reasons mm -hmm. that have been outlined in the Constitution. One, either I'm incompetent, and they would have to prove what incompetent is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, um, insane. I'm bankrupt, mm -hmm. or I'm, I'm in, I, I, I'm, I've been involved in gross misconduct. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but to take me um, to task um, uh, to the PSC because of a decision that I've made is not part of um, the requirements mm -hmm. for removal. Those are issues that can be canvassed and challenged in court. Mm -hmm. uh, and somebody can go either through judicial review or can go and apply for um, to be allowed to prosecute privately because they're not uh, satisfied with the decision uh, that I've made. Uh, and that's why I'm saying it is very purposely mm -hmm. um, targeted at me because of decisions that I've made and not because I'm incompetent or I've been involved in gross misconduct uh, or I'm bankrupt or, or insane. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, your office is a very important cog in this wheel of justice and you have certain powers. So, for instance, you have the powers to direct um, the investigative agencies to commence an investigation. Yeah. And when they do that, you also have the power to determine whether you're going to court or not. Yes. And I think what we, what we, we've been hearing lately, from, especially from the office of the DCI, is that you're frustrating their work. Um, in 2019, you launched the guidelines to, for the decision to charge. charge yes. And what you said, now, okay, this is what we'll be considering as threshold. And the DCI seems to be saying, even despite there being some clear uh, guidelines on how, on how you shall make your decision, we still feel that you are coming back to us and saying, well, this is insufficient, and we are not convinced when you say it's insufficient evidence. How do you interact with the investigative agencies when they bring a file to you and you feel that we haven't reached the threshold? Do you explain to them the threshold and what ought to be done? Yes, we, we explain the threshold. <clears throat> Actually, um, what we have is um, what we call a central intake. So we, we've started that pilot project in, in Nairobi and we've digitized it. And <clears throat> once an investigator, for example, a police, police officer brings a file, um, then um, they are taken through the guidelines. Uh, and we've trained quite a number of police officers for them to understand what, what the guideline says and what is required. Mm. Um, and if there are certain documentations that are missing uh, in terms of the evidence that, that is required, um, then the prosecutor will explain uh, to, 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 the, to, the, to the police officer mm. and the investigating officer why we feel that the evidence is not sufficient and we'll even guide them in terms of what are the documents that are missing and how they can go about um, getting them mm -hmm. <coughs> for us um, so that we can then be able to go to court. You see, for a long time, <coughs> what has been happening is a very skeleton file is brought. We are, we are, we are, we are forced to make a decision on a very skeleton file, uh, just saying that uh, Latif was in the car um, and had a scaffold. Um, sometimes you don't even know who the parties are. Mm. Uh, then we have to charge you. <clears throat> Once we've charged, um, the investigators now move on to another case. Mm. So now it's the prosecutor playing cat and mouse, mm. bring this evidence, mm. we want this document, we want this. Then when you're in court, you look, you look very incompetent. Mm. And, and that's when then the magistrate says, you know, uh, Insufficient we, yeah, evidence. There, there's, uh, there's no evidence here. Mm. Mm. We are coming here for the last one year, two years. Uh, the case is not moving. Um, you know, either withdraw the case or, you know, bring the documentations that are required. Mm. So as prosecutors, then we are, we are in a rock and hard place. When you go back to the investigators, they have moved on. Uh, some of them are, you know, they, they tell you we are overwhelmed. We have so much work. Mm. So <clears throat> at the end of it, who suffers? It's the Kenyan. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we came with these strict guidelines. Mm. And there is no way the guidelines will work without us being very strict and requiring that, you know, um, whatever is required before a decision is made mm. should be in the file. Mm. We are now not in the game of 
uh, <coughs> uh, going to court and, and waiting for documentation for two, three years. Mm. If you look at some of the cases like Goldenberg and, and Anglo leasing before 2010, they've been there for 15, 16 years. How mm. do you explain to Kenyans? Mm. Uh, and I think one of the, man, one of the um, commitments that I made when I was in parliament taking over the, the office was that I will work on that. And I was very serious. Mm. Uh, and, and this is the, the gist of, of the problem. The feeling <coughs> by the DCI director, George Kinoti, is that there is, you know, some discrimination in the application of these guidelines of the decision to charge. I, I so, for instance, he said, we yeah. must apply the law equally without any discrimination. Otherwise, it's only the weak who will be subjected to the law, not the mighty. For us, the police, we treat all equally. There's no big man or small man when it comes to crime. We don't discriminate. It seems to apply that they come to you and they say, so there's this big person who's a judge who you should be uh, taking to court. And you're saying there's no sufficient evidence. The DCI feels, what do you mean? You're now becoming a stumbling block. No, no, you see, the law should be equally applied to everybody. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the bulk of our cases, actually cases that deal with the common monange. Mm. And it is these cases that we have a big problem in terms of the kind of files that are brought to us. Mm. Not these big cases. Uh, these, some of these big cases are complex in nature. Sometimes they delay because um, of the kind of compilation and the documents that are required. But if you go down to Makadara or Kibera, mm. you will see um, that we are very strict, even um, uh, you know, with cases that are, uh, are cases that are brought affecting the common monange. So, for example, as ODPP, we said very clearly that these old uh, colonial cases like touting, people are being charged for touting. Mm. <laughs> Uh, they, they used to go and, uh, you know, round up youth. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't pay 50 bob, for us to be charged without a file, nothing. So we decided that some of those cases, we are not going to deal with them anymore. In essence, we've even suspended them. Mm -hmm. And we have been very, uh, very, very, very strict. Now, the, now there is this, call, this thing called Maineo. If you are in Maineo of Lani, you are rounded up and, and charged. No file, you know, <coughs> you don't even know what you're going to tell the magistrate. We have said no. And really, you know, these big cases are just an excuse because, uh, you know, K Kenyans will be more emotional with them. Mm. Sure. But the gist of, of the problem is that there are these cases that have been affecting Wanainchi that we are very strict on and that we have, we have said that the guidelines will have to be followed. This is what is bothering uh, people. In the Situation Room this morning is Eric Latif, Ndu Oko, C.T. Muga, and our guest, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nodin Haji. Nodin, you took office in April 2018, and immediately you took office, you went to work, and there was a lot of goodwill, goodwill from the public, when they started seeing, like, you know, there's movement in the um, course of justice, goodwill from the other actors in the system and also goodwill from the national executive over time that goodwill seems to be waning in fact i'm even looking at some of the comments and people are saying okay so uh it, it uh, he has lately turned out to be sluggish we are losing hope on him just, just one comment from francis odipo now, if we look at the number of things that you were doing in those first two years, 2018, 2019, there was a lot of movement. Uh, the Kamata Kamata Fridays, big cases, big arrests, taking people to court. And then we look back at the progress of those cases and you start asking questions. What's happening? The Aurora and Kimura Dam, you have recently gone and now said, let's consolidate files. You have said, let's drop charges against some people. So we will become state witnesses. And in fact, we're even asking ourselves on this show. So two years down the road, the DPP has just now realized that the case number one and case number two are similar and the witnesses are similar. Hmm. Where was the DPP all this time? I mean, how do you explain some of these things that are now happening in court? Thank you. <coughs> um, on, on the Kim Warrior and on, on Aurora case, um, first of all, the separation of the files was uh, a direction by the courts. And then secondly, we had, uh, we had a strategy. Um, <clears throat> um, 
um, that I will explain. But, but what, what you said, therein lies the problem. And, and that is a problem that we are trying to deal with now. That when we go to court and we charge, we are ready and we have the evidence um, <clears throat> and, and we are able to proceed seamlessly. And, and this is part of the problem that um, some of my colleagues don't seem to understand. Um, that, fine, we can rush to court to please the mass, but the, at the end of it, then you are stuck there, trying to get the documents that you want, mm -hmm. trying to apply for mutual legal assistance from other countries. That takes ages. So we had to sit down on the drawing table and say, hey, um, when we rush, there's that feel-good effect. Mm. And then after, after, after a while, then Kenyans now come and ask, what is this? Mm. You guys are not proceeding. Mm. So do we do that to play to the, to, to, to yeah. the gallery? Or do we bite the bullet and say, we are going to do this very systematically and at the end get the desired results uh, that, that are required? Mm. If you go to any country, for example, in the States and, and, and other countries that you, we, we look up to in terms of democracy and all that, you will see that cases take three, four years before they're brought into court. Because what they're doing is they're being very, very thorough, mm -hmm. especially the, the big cases. If you look at some of the cases that involve uh, um, <clears throat> corruption, um, just, just pick any that has been brought. You will see that they've taken three, four years back and forth between prosecutors and investigators, ensuring that the documentations are there, ensuring that when we go to court, we are able to tell the court, here's the money. Mm. We have traced this money, we have traced the assets, uh, and, and we are willing now, we are ready to go forward, even if it will take six, one year in court, we are ready to go forward, but mm. we have everything and we are ready to disclose uh, at, the, at the click of a finger. The, the practice for a long time has been, we charge, then now you start dancing in court. Mm. Leo to patia hii time, investigate iko busy, iko Mombasa, mwingine sijui iko wapi, ameenda cause, amefanya hii. <coughs> Nobody takes this thing seriously. Mm. So when you come back and now say we are going to take this thing seriously and we must be ready at the click of a finger when we are before the the, the magistrate and if he says we are ready to go, we are ready to go. Mm. Um, but there is resistance to that. But this is where we must go. It is hard. Uh, it's not going to be easy, mm. but as a country, we must move forward. Uh, justice must seem to be, uh, to be done uh, at all times. This is what we are trying to achieve. But how do you balance it's that? <clears throat> because there's still the public interest angle, and there's the public still maintaining trust in the investigation and prosecution agencies. So, so, so we see if, that there's corruption here. Yeah. There is corruption, let's say, let's just pick an agency, Kemsa. Yeah, yes. All right. So there's all this corruption talk. And if we say that we're going to take five years before we see the DPP taking people to court, in the five years' time, people will have lost their confidence. Um, so the, the, the other side of the coin is this mm. we rush, we charge. Um, the criminals know what, what we are charging them for. Uh, as, as you're waiting for the documentations, they're clearing and, and ensuring that they're destroying some of the evidence. <laughs> <coughs> so five, down, five years down the line, you, the you get bashed. Yeah, the case collapses. You don't, rec uh, you don't recover anything. Mm. Uh, Sasa, Jameni, are we going to continue like that? What we are saying, it, it will not take five years. It can take a year. Mm. But let it be done thoroughly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and if, for example, there are documents that have been destroyed and there are many ways of, of going about that, we can charge the people who have done that. Um, we, can, uh, we can suspend people as they wait. We can freeze their accounts. We can freeze their assets. Um, but get the, 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 the case, um, you know, ready in a position where we are able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that this individual committed that crime. Mm. That's what we want to do. Mm. Uh, and, and once that is accepted, then you will see that even you don't even need the one year, yeah, exactly. depending on how complex the, the crime is. You know, there's, uh, you mentioned some of the, uh, the explanations you hear. Uh, people are overwhelmed. Um, there isn't enough time. People have been transferred. 
the people who are involved in these processes are professionals. If it is the investigative arm of the government, these are people who are trained. This is what they're trained to do. So when we have a situation in this country where we are constantly dealing with cases that are thrown out of court and it's always there. It's like the magistrate gives uh, your office addressing down says, what on earth do you think you're doing? Why do you bring these cases before you plant them? Now, this is my thinking. How do people who are well trained, people who know what they're supposed to do, bring about a situation where we are always dealing with something that seems to be amiss and yet it is their duty to ensure that nothing of this sort is actually amiss. I am saying, I am saying, not you, mm. that it bespeaks of a deliberate effort to actually sabotage the end result that is required. Meaning, let this thing go to court. You know very well what is going to happen mm. because you are in charge of the evidence. You know what you can do with the evidence. If it isn't there, it will stay in court. It will either be forgotten and don't we have cases upon cases in this country where somebody even wonders. I remember a story I was being told about one from a well, he's a politician, and he told this friend of mine that one of the things that he realized in the time when he was detained, he was detained a number of times, mm, yeah. he said, sometimes what would happen is they would actually forget they've detained you. <laughs> so, so you'd be languishing in prison thinking, but they've long forgotten. I mean, they arrested you, they threw you in, but they've forgotten. They, so, so three years down the line, someone says, hey, where's this guy? Oh, you mean he's still in? Oh, please, remove him, remove him. There's no... Now... <laughs> That is in a time gone by. Would we be wrong if we say that some of these things that we witness are a clear indication of a deliberate, a purposed activity meant to ensure that just the justice that we are seeking is not actually arrived at? Um, Zeki John, let me put it this way. <laughs> uh, we have been so used to doing that yeah. that it, be, it has become a norm. <clears throat> if, even when actually um, you're not doing it deliberately, mm. but it's become practice and customary to do mm. some of these things. You know, just it's where boss where fanya tu yende ban itoke hapa kwa deski yangu. Sometimes it's not even deliberate. It's just, it's, it has just been inculcated in, 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 in us. And, th and this is what we're trying to change. Uh, and, and this is where the resistance is, as, as they say, you know, change is not easy. Um, but we are trying to, to do that. Uh, and uh, we're having a lot of uh, resistance, but hopefully we'll get there. Some of the resistance is just that people just don't want to change uh, because it's cumbersome, you know, it was... You know, you need to use your brain because yeah. this is a very complex case. Uh, you will have to look for experts. <clears throat> but you see, things have changed. The magistrates that are sitting there today are very switched on individuals. Mm. You're not going to just go and say, at Aliba. You will ask your Aliba, Vipi na ilifika Vipi kwake na pesa iko wapi. So how do I explain that? Mm. If, uh, we, without having the documentations and the proper charts, to show how, sorry, to show how um, the monies were stolen, mm. who was involved, uh, and, and, and you know how the whole scheme and conspiracy came about. Mm. No, Dean, even as you say that, um, I'm also looking at a situation, yes, indeed, where things have been done a certain way for the longest period of time, and that what it would then spell out to the members of the public is that there's a reluctance, actually, to justice, right? That's on one side. But isn't it possible also that there is a reluctance to actually bring some of these folks to book in the sense that, look, nobody wants to go to jail, whether you've done it or not, right? Nobody wants to be prosecuted. So people will go above and beyond their own capacity, even poss possibly working with people in your very own office to make sure that these things are not done. So that there's a circumvention of justice, even while you're here, tooth and nail sweating trying to get it done there are those who are working within your very system to make sure these things do not come to light oh, is that reality still not there yeah it is still there mm. it's all over uh you can never um as, as i said when, when we were just chatting here mm. first of all I'm, I'm not saying i'm perfect mm. i'm not perfect i'm human 
Um, there are certain things that I might have made mistakes with. I'm trying to correct some of those things. Uh, some of the perception that I had when I came in, uh, once the reality hit, I, I discovered Allah. <laughs> <coughs> you know, uh, of course, there are people within my own system, mm. within the whole justice sector. They don't want change. Mm. That's that's all over, uh, all over the world. These things happen, and and uh, and I, I am cognizant of that. Mm. Um, uh, what we are doing is we are trying to create a culture change mm. um, within the ODPP and hopefully it will have a ripple effect um, to the whole justice sector. Mm. Um, and that's what we, we are trying we, 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 um, we are trying to do as, as ODPP. How important do you think communication is to the people of Kenya? It's, it's when these important. things you're doing, letting people know, even if you can't do a step by step, but keeping Kenyans abreast of what is going on. Because again, there is that mentality that the little, the small cases, you'll be able to find this information really quickly. The big cases, whether or not you're dealing with, you know, external documentation, or external processes that need to be brought into. Um, the thought is that, all right, the little fish will be caught much quicker than the bigger ones. And that's where the interest is. Somebody steals a loaf of bread and by the end of the day, they're in for 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. But somebody steals hundreds of millions and uh, they're, they're walking about scot-free. Understanding the process is simple if it's explained to you. So where does communication play a role here in terms of uh, what we, your office is doing? Uh, we, we, uh, I must say we, we're trying our best. We have the ODPP Cafe, for example. Uh, within Twitter and, and Facebook, we, we, we try and explain our positions. Um, <clears throat> that's why I'm here today, to try and explain what we are doing. Um, and I think as, as ODPP, we... We have been as open as possible, probably even sometimes we've been accused of being too open. Uh, <laughs> and it's only because we are trying to explain to the Kenyan public. We had out outreach programs uh, that we were going to the to the public. We went to Kayole, we were planning, but then um, um, COVID Probably. then kicked in. We are now tr trying to see if we can restart that. Uh, <clears throat> and explaining to the Kenyans so that they understand their rights mm. uh, and they understand what, why we're making certain decisions. Mm. We, we, we've been doing that and we've been really trying our best. Mm. Hopefully it's, it's, it's working and Kenyans are getting what we want and we will strive to try and explain more. Mm. Um, what we've also tried to do is not to be malicious, uh, not to be um, um, vindictive. Hii ni kazi tu. So, nikikisema faila iko tayari, I'm not fighting you, Latif, because you're the I.O. who brought this. Nikazi tu nakwambia hiya ikot. It's not personal. <laughs> and and we, we have ensured that we are not personal. Mm. Uh, while so, certain quarters have, have been very personal <laughs> to the extent that they, they they sponsor people to remove some of their colleagues from office. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> but we have tried to be as professional as possible. Right. You know, that's why I said this isn't a popularity contest. Eh? No, it's not. You know, when uh, you refer to a reform agenda, yes, the Constitution of Kenya is considered a reform document. But it isn't reform until it is actualized. I mean, for instance, how many people know the founding fathers of the American Constitution? How many people actually know them? People know Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin. But the person who's known more than anybody else is Abraham Lincoln. Mm. Because he operationalized it. The one thing is remembered for the emancipation of slaves. Now, and, and he was killed for that. Mm. Uh, I think <laughs> you have you have actually you have you have actually read my mind, because it's unfortunate that the process of reform involves stepping on toes which are actually where they shouldn't be. I mean, it's a, it's a path that people are meant uh, to be walking. Someone has gone and put their foot there. But let me ask the question: Do you really think? that the efforts that you are putting in will bear fruit and that a culture of doing right can actually be established within the system that you are currently in charge of. I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that as Kenyans we, we can achieve that. Mm. Um, you know, the fact that we <laughs> uh, it, it just speaks volumes, you know, that uh, not in a bad way, but I'm just saying um, the Kenya, a lot of Kenyans want to see change. Mm. Uh, 
uh, and they actually want to see um, the actualization, as you said, of the constitution itself mm. uh, and of all the legal documents that we have so that they're just not mere papers, mm. um, but they're, they're living documents that are guiding us um, for, for a better Kenya. Mm. Uh, and I'm hopeful because where, wherever you go, um, Kenyans, you know, want to see that change. I'm happy that people are taking us to task, for example. Uh, I've said in Swahili, uh, <laughs> um, there's no way that we can, we can change or make ODPP, for example, better mm. without understanding some of the criticism that are out there. Mm. And we're happy uh, to take them um, and, and see how constructively we can, we, we can better ourselves. Mm. Um, and, and, and that Kenyans are switched on and they're following, whether it's through Twitter or, or, or wherever, wherever mm. um, it, it, it encourages us uh, that, that we are on the right path and uh, that Kenyans want to change, they want mm. to see the change, uh, and that hopefully we are going to be that change catalyst. I'm looking at what you've said. I mean, you got into office and you've taken a step back now and seen there are very many things that have been happening. We are taking cases to court and then we realize we don't have the all the legs to stand on in this particular case. They say in Kiswahili, mtego wapanya uanasa waliomo na wasio kuemo. Right? A mousetrap will uh, capture the culpable and the innocent. Now I'm speaking for the innocent. With the cases that are there in court, just from the big cases, even to the small cases, yes. are you in a position to just review all of them and for the sake of the innocent, because we've said it here before, when somebody is taken by the DPP or the prosecutor to court, you get into a system. You're bonded by court. That means your property and your money is held by court. Your travel documents are held by court. Your life is basically on hold, on hold until this case shall complete. Now, there are people who are genuinely innocent and there are people who are genuinely guilty. And it's only upon uh, prosecution that it shall be determined. But if you look at the files, is it possible for you to see all right, in this particular case, I have very many innocent people. Can I just drop charges and start afresh? Yes. For the sake of the innocent. And that's why you have the word miscarriage of justice. Mm. And this happens all over the world. Um, if you look at, for example, I, I like referring to the States because uh, a lot of Kenyans look up to that and aspire to be like the United States of America. Mm. There's a lot of cases of miscarriage of justice. Uh, there was a particular, I can't remember, but in New York, for example, nine individuals who were prosecuted. And at the end, when this was re reviewed 30 years later, <laughs> they were found innocent. innocent. Mm. And of course, as ODPP, if we asked upon to review, we review. And that's why when documents come, we look at them thoroughly. Uh, and if there, the, 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 there isn't sufficient evidence, we are not willing to proceed mm. because we don't want to be accused of or end up uh, being involved in miscarriage of justice. Mm -hmm. um, that happens. We are cognizant of that and we try our best. At the end of it, we are also humans. You can make mistakes. Uh, sub sometimes the way the evidence is compiled, um, you never know the, the, the interest or the intentions of, of the investigator, for example, or even the prosecutor. Mm. Uh, um, so there are instances there's quite a number of them in, 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 in our system and we are trying our best to review them. Yeah. For example, um, even it, the miscarriage of justice, even when we had a program that was called All for Justice and we went all over the country. Mm. And in Nakuru, we found an individual who has been in remand for 14 years. Remand? Remand, yes, in yeah. Nakuru, for 14 years. And when you even ask for the file, it is in tatters. Ata ujui wanze wapi. Um, so it's happening mm. and, and it's, it's unfortunate mm. and we are trying our best to, yeah, to, to review those Please, things. A question, which, Please go ahead. A question could, which could be a message um, and many could be thinking, hoping. Are you corruptible? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> I, I, and, and maybe that's part of the problem mm. uh, because if I was corrupt, is uh, a petition in Gekwa a different kind of petition mm. uh, and, I, and I pray to God that I don't fall in, into the trap mm. yeah. you know the um, there's, a, there's an, um, a matter we bring up in the studio ever so often but with regards to uh, our police service it may be, it's not your purview but as a citizen you can comment do you really believe 
that the arms of government that are charged with investigative matters, do you feel that they're adequately resourced to do what they're supposed to do? Um, <clears throat> Well, first of all, you know, the, there are bad apples within the police and there are individuals who probably should not be there mm -hmm. uh, because they don't have the requisite. Uh, but a majority of the police are doing a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, and a majority of them want to do better. Mm -hmm. Of course, as a country, we have limitation uh, in terms of, of resources. But I think f if, if you look at uh, the last um, four or five years, a lot of resources have been injected into, in, in, into the police. Uh, but I believe more can be. Uh, if, if we have um, the means, mm. then more should be uh, uh, done to, to the police. Um, the, you know, we, we, we are discussing about corruption cases, but there are many other cases that they're dealing with. They're dealing with, uh, for example, terrorism very effectively. Mm. Uh, over time, we've built resilience. Uh, or, organized crime, for example, we are prosecuting a lot of organized crimes. Um, there's even cyber crime that people uh, probably still don't know that it's happening in Kenya. Mm. Uh, but the, you know, the investigators are doing a great job there. Mm. Uh, capacity has been built, both of the police and um, even the intelligence, in terms of being able to collect and being able to to, to face those challenges. Mm. Um, so there's there's very good work that is being done. Uh, uh, and unfortunately, these small differences in terms of, uh, especially <laughs> corruption cases, mm. uh, has 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 brought out something that is not as big as as people would uh, would think. Right. If you go down uh, to the to the counties, we are working very well, uh, both investigators and and, and prosecutors, uh, and the police are trying their best. Of course, you have bad apples. Uh, but um, hopefully that is something you can invite the IG here to come and discuss. <laughs> As we conclude the conversation this morning, yeah. uh, Nudin Haji, speak to Kenyans. They are all seeing this. I mean, you have been taken before the uh, Public Service Commission. The number of petitions, uh, petitions have been lodged. And more are going to be lodged. And, and more are coming. <laughs> speak to Kenyans today and talk to them about the job that you're doing and why they should continue believing that Nurdin Haji is the man for this job. Um, I, I thought I've been doing that all the time. Summarize it now. One more time. <laughs> well, uh, as I said, um, you know, the, the, it's, it's, it's a culture that we have to change. And we are trying to, to, to do that as ODPP. We are trying to be the catalyst that, that would bring change in terms of how effective um, the justice system can be. Um, you know, prosecutors are, are, are referred to as the guardians uh, to the justice sector um, 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 in the sense that we are the gatekeepers. Anything uh, that needs to come to the judiciary, mm. then ODPP um, is, is the one that does it. And we are trying to do that, not for our sake, not for my sake, but for the sake of Kenyans. Mm. We are trying to build institutions and not individuals. Okay. Um, and that is where the resistance is. But we are hopeful that we'll be able to do that. And we're asking Kenyans to be patient uh, for us to realize so that um, the, the wheels of justice work uh, and, and, and Kenyans can see them working. Okay. Uh, I don't want to, we don't want to play to the gallery uh, because if you do that, then uh, there, is a, there is a side effect to it, which is ineffectiveness and, and, and delays. And miscarriage of justice. Yeah. Nuruddin Haji, the Director of Public Prosecutions, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. Come again soon. And... It's important, and I think it's good that you've even said it yourself, it's important that these offices are open to scrutiny. Yeah. Let us all raise our concerns about the ODPP, about the DCI, about the police, about the judiciary. Asante sana. Asante sana. God bless. Have a lovely day. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.